I'm, I'm here at the SDC Summit, and we've sat through a couple of sessions on usability. So I decided to grab two of the usability people that I know really well here who have good opinions and judgments to ask them some feedback. One of the, the guidelines that we've listened to is to avoid putting links embedded right within a paragraph, right in, in a sentence, because it, it uh, makes it so users have an exit point right there. And uh, I wanted to find out if you think there are any downsides to having an embedded link. So is it, is it in any way, is there, is there a downside to having this embedded link strategy? I think it was the embedded link strategy that we're advising against now because the, the problem is you have a paragraph of text and the person is reading along quite happily and they come to the link and the th they're just it's sort of irresistible to click it okay so now they're on another page well if that's the strategy you wanted then that's great because they're on the other page but if you wanted them to carry on reading to the end of the paragraph you may have lost them so, so here's my contention though. Where do you put the link? I, if it's really, if it's important to have a link, do you put it at the bottom and do you have a little footnote I in the text? Uh, no, well you put it right after the text. I mean, think about how you would talk to me. So, Tom, there's something really interesting I want to tell you. Let me tell you about it. And by the way, you can find more information out by following, by going to a place that I've sent you. So the link becomes the, oh, by the way, there's some more information. But get your thought out first. You wouldn't stop in the middle tell me where to go and then come back to the rest of that sentence. I mean, we've seen, I've watched people, I, I work with the National Cancer Institute, and I've watched people reading their links. We use both embedded links and sort of follow on, see also links. And there are people who will simply click on the first link they see, and you're really penalizing them if that link isn't good. And I'll tell you a tragic example. Um, in the beginning, uh, they have a lot of um, publications that are available online, but they're also available in print. You typically get them at your doctor's office, right? In cancer, they give you some information about it. And so early on the first page, it says, you can get lots more information about cancer from the National Cancer Institute's website. And people get to that link, and they click it, and they end up at the home page again. Mm. So they start cycling around in circles. And we didn't mean it. We just meant, oh, by the way, if you don't know where the home page is, we'll provide you a handy link here. But that's not what's happening. And it's, and it's happening to the people who are the most needy, right? The people who most need our help to make the navigation really good, to make the information really clear. So we're penalizing the people who can stand that penalty the least. So, so now I want to look at this from another perspective because I think it's more complicated than this. Search engine optimization depends on links that have context like that. So if you say, go to the Cancer Institute and the Cancer Institute is linked, that tells Google that that's really what it should serve up in the search results. So if you were to take and remove a lot of these embedded hyperlinks, like Google wouldn't work as well. People wouldn't be able to use Google that as well. Google would get over it. Google would really get over it. And, and one of the problems as well is that Google is having to infer context from the text around the link. And that's because the link is too short and not informative enough. Right. If it's a proper link that's quite informative that says why you want to follow the link, Google can read that just like anybody else. Right. It's just like another sentence. It's just at the end. We have a lot of publications. This is a publication about breast cancer. We, this publication has this. If you'd like to see other publications, go to the NCI, go to the NCI publications finder. Now you've got a whole sentence at the end. Yeah. It's just that instead of letting it be as run-on sentence, we've called it out on a link. We've made it very clear visually that it's someplace you can go for more information as opposed to just jamming it into a big paragraph. And that's the thing I was really wanting to pick up on there. Because Whitney said, as opposed to just jamming it into a big paragraph, we're also making the assumption that when you take those links out from the embedded text and put them at the end, that at the same time you're also making them short paragraphs. Mm. That you're making them short, interesting or paragraphs anyway. or even sentences so that the user can still you know, get the whole sense of what's in that paragraph before they come to the link. If you've got some great massive long paragraph, so by the time they come to the link they've forgotten why they might want to follow it, it's not going to work. Mm. Uh, there is one exception sometimes and that's def definition links, um, especially if they look different than the other links. Right? If, you're, if you're the kind of site that has definitions of medical terms, for example, I can't think of what site that might be, um, <laughs> then it's sometimes helpful to have 
good definitions for those words scattered everywhere for people who need them. But you want to make sure they look different. They need to be more diminutive looking than a regular link is. You need to be able to distinguish between navigation link, and that's actually a way to do it. So in the text, we have navigation link, and we have definition links. But when we want to send you something, we make it a little navigation event. Mm. So, uh, you know, I'm really conflicted about that. I'm still <laughs> conflicted about the embedded links because Wikipedia, for mm -hmm. example, has an internal linking strategy. Mm -hmm. Ev almost every word is linked to other words or other concepts within Wikipedia. You're reading a page, and if there's another article that has that word, they link to it. And somebody told me that the reason Wikipedia rises to the top of search results is because of this massive internal linking strategy. <laughs> and, and other blog sites, other blog sites like Penelope Trunk, she has tons of internal links that link to her own content. So as you're reading, you have probably 20 different exit points within the content. So I feel like if I were to give up a lot of these internal links, um, I, I'm going to lose some search engine optimization. Can you well, speak to that? I'm afraid we have to say what every good usability person <laughs> says. It depends. <laughs> it, it does it depend. It does depend. And it also depends really as, uh, it depends whether you're mainly writing for the position you get in Google or you're mainly writing for the person who actually visits your page. And it depends if you are known as the encyclopedia with deeply cross-linked <laughs> topics um, yeah. or whether you are writing, oh, say, information and instructions about your company and your company's products. And, and it also depends on whether it's important for the person to get to the end of the paragraph, right? Mm -hmm. um, there are three ways of treating breast cancer, A, B, and C. We wouldn't really want them to leap off before they've seen that short information that there's three ways, A, B, and C. Now, we're ready for you to go choose which one you want to, but just because A happened to be first, maybe C is the right one for them, and they'll never, ever know that C existed because yeah. mm -hmm. they never got there. So I think you have to think about your audience, your content, what they're doing there, um, why they're reading that paragraph. I mean, you, all of those things come into play all the time. All right, I was talking with Whitney Cuisenberry and Carolyn Jarrett at the STC Summit. So we're going to have some more video casts with, with Whitney later. But uh, if you want to find out more information, do you guys have a website you want to plug? Well, I think the one that we were just talking about today is um, called Design to Read, and it's about designing for people who don't read easily. And I'd like to plug that. It's www.designtoread, all one word, dot com. And I might plug plainlanguage.gov. Um, a lot of their examples are regulatory, sort of nasty, horrible scientific regulatory information. But they've got wonderful examples of how to write it clearly so that normal human beings can understand it. All right. Thank you.